Peace and greetings, peace and greetings from Brother Divine of a Culture Shock LLC. Of course, today is Sit Down Sunday, and I'm gonna have the absolute pleasure to have the sister goddess here. I've been man, is how long we've we been trying to get this interview? Oh, for at least about a month. Man, I have the sister Tunji uh representing Tunji's creations. We're actually on location at her shop, her location out here in Madison, Alabama. Um, go ahead, tell them a little bit about yourself, sis. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Dr. Tanjanika Burney. I am an ethereal doctor, um, in which that means I'm a spiritual doctor. I handle all of your spiritual needs. Um, I'm also the local exorcist here. <laughs> um, so if you are on your journey, need some help, you need some help with your gifts, um, you're feeling stuck, you need aura alignment. You, if you like to be taught how to do this yourself, um, also I read cards, I read energies, I read stones. I don't have to read, I don't really need any of that to read you, but I do that for your confirmation. Um, not only that, um, I also make skincare products, medicines, baths, anything that you need spiritually and physically for your wellness. Um, I have been dealing with herbs for about 30 years now. Um, I have been working with energy in 42, so <laughs> over 40 years now. <laughs> um, also, um, well, as you can see, I make jewelry as well. And all of my jewelry has specific purposes. All the gemstones are real. Um, and so the jewelry is made for the purpose of healing and helping. And then I tell you why you're drawn to that jewelry, depending on which stone it is. Um, because if all stones, everything will tell me what's going on with you, your past, your present, and what's about to happen. Um, I don't even know what this is. I think that was a mouthful. Did yeah, I miss you, anything? You, you were real, real, real fast, but I like that you answered a couple questions that I was about to ask. Um, well, we'll start right here. How long have you been working for yourself as far as like your apothecary shop? Um, I've been an apothecary for seven years openly. Okay. Um, I have been doing it for my family damn near all my life. My mom and, no, excuse me, my grandmother and grand, grandfather both taught me how to live off the land, how to go foraging for medicine, um, not only in your yard, but in the wilderness areas. Also, how you can use different animals and parts of animals as medicine as well. Mm -hmm. So between that and then just different trial and error techniques myself um, I, and God, of course, I created something spectacular. Uh, praise due to the most high, most yes. definitely. Uh, what inspired you to actually create this business? Hmm. Now, that is kind of funny. Mm. So, I don't know. There's no easy way to put this, but most Christians are afraid of me. Okay. But they don't understand that all of this came from church. Absolutely. I was a devout Christian in church. Only thing I wanted to do was just serve my Lord. And actually... Um, I was looking for a church home here. This was about four years ago, I want to say. And um, I had once I, I just started dating somebody, went to his church with them, fell in love with the church. So I become a member. It's just like from day one, I felt like God was talking to me in that church. And damn sure he was. So as I got more and more into the church, because I used to go to Sunday and Sunday services and Bible, um, Bible studies. So I would notice that when God was talking to me, the pastor will look at me like this, and he'd be like this. Mm -hmm. Just I kind of yeah, yeah, nobody else. And I kept a notebook. Um, oh shit, all my notebooks is up. But I kept the, I kept the notebook. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I kept the notebook and I wrote down everything, um, dates, the the titles of the sermons, chapters, verses. If there was something that caught my ear that he said specifically, I'd write that all down also. And I and I told my boyfriend one day, I was like, God is talking to me through Pastor Lockett. And he was like, God talks to everybody around church, or you know how cynical they are. Okay, whatever. So then I went to talk to him, mm -hmm. the the pastor, and he was like, Yeah, the, God, of course God is talking to you. So then I just gave up then. And um, when COVID hit, I was doing the, the live feed. I started the live feed with my phone and I was directly behind the can, um, camera. And you can see him doing it. You could see when God was talking to me. Mm -hmm. So the assistant pastor came to me one day and was like, God is talking to you. Mm -hmm. And I just stopped and started crying. I was like, you can see it too? So, so okay, so yeah, I'm not crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah, true indeed, true indeed. So question, what goals do you want to achieve with your business? 
Like, what's your mission that you're set out here for? My mission is to reach as many of God's soldiers and warriors as I can to not only wake them up, help them to get to know themselves, to grow their um, grow their gifts, grow their powers, or whatever it is you want to call it, um, so they would know that, you know, we're what they make movies about. There's no reason for you to be sitting back afraid of what somebody is going to say about you. We have a specific purpose, which is to heal mm -hmm. and to protect. True, true. So, also, I just wanted to know, um, since you've been in business, have you experienced any high po uh, high points in in business, entrepreneurship, and uh, if you might have experienced like any low points in business, and how did you deal with those? Oh, that's about every week. <laughs> yeah. um, so, since I've been in a brick and mortar business, um, I'm not gonna lie, business is not. Well, I already knew the first couple of years is it was going to be slow. You might be in the red. Um, the first few months, though, the spirit, the attacks that I was getting from the Christian community. Now, that was a little overwhelming and that like I wasn't used to that. But I I'm on a mission. I am on my purpose. And again, God gave me my marching orders in church to do this. So, I mean, everything from how the place is laid out, to what I'm supposed to be doing, to who I reach. So I, I I had to realize I need to stop worrying about them because the more I worry about who is attacking me and who was trying to stop my business, the more I give them power and the more my business will go down. Mm -hmm. So once I got that mindset, I had to retrain my thought. That's when my business started picking up. More people started coming to me. I don't have to explain myself. When you see me on on social media and you see me on the ocean and I'm parting the waves and you see me moving clouds and fire, mm -hmm. well, I mean, you can't dispute that. True indeed. True indeed. Um, so question, have you ever experienced any type of failures or anything that you might have perceived as a failure or whatnot? And if you have, how did you rebound from that? Or, All the time. Or what lessons did you learn from these failures? I received failures all the time. Now, at first, I thought it was a bad thing. You know, I'm like, oh my gosh, I, that, that was my fear. I had a fear of failure. Then I started failing. <laughs> well, fear over with now, you know, but I don't see failure as failure. What I see it as an opportunity to improve. Just because you may perceive it as a failure, it doesn't mean that it's not going to work. It just means that you need to tweak something. That's it. And once you do that, then, you know, Things will progress. Like, for instance, when I first started, I was just, you know, I thought that I was going to just thrive on skincare. I was afraid to use my gifts and let people see my gifts, you know. Mm -hmm. um, well, God smacked me on the back of the head and like, no, that's not why I put you there. <laughs> so then I started, you know, adding little stuff as I got comfortable. And then finally, I just stepped out on faith and just went full force. Hence the readings, the aura alignment, and everything else. Yeah, true indeed. Um... Let me ask you, what what's the most valuable lesson you've learned since you've been in entrepreneurship? Accept help. Um, everybody who says that they want to work with you or that they do want to help you are not going to. They're, they Most people just want to take advantage of you. They want you to be okay enough so that you can take care of them. Mm -hmm. um, but you'll know when those genuine ones come around. As long as you keep yourself, um, how, how do you, um, as long as you stay true to you, your craft and God. Grounded. Right. Nobody else. You don't, mm -hmm. you don't need to be listening to nobody. Nobody. Yeah. You'll be okay. So where do you see Tunji's creations in the next five to 10 years? I'm taking over the world, baby. Oh, <laughs> I'm already in the process. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I set out, well, I'm not going to lie. Now, yes, God started all of this out, but it was at a time where I was going through a really bad breakup to somebody that I would, thought that I was going to be spending the rest of my life with. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, oh, you think that you're going to leave me just broken down here? Bitch, I'm about to own this city, your city, mm -hmm. the city that you tried to make me nameless in. Everybody's going to know my name. Everybody. And guess what? Everybody knows my name. That's the inspiration and motivation. <laughs> and I always tell people that like anything that you feel like is negative coming at you, I always use it as like the fire, you mm -hmm. know, to motivate you to prove the naysayers wrong. Like I, 
I proudly wear my chip on my shoulder of how, you know, people try to knock me down and all of that type of stuff or say this, that, and the third. I just use it as motivation. So I like that. It's a big motivational piece. And especially when, you know, not only do you have exes, but you have their family members. You have um, ex-church members. You have people who are jealous of you. People you don't even know. They hate me because I'm pure. Mm -hmm. They hate me because I pray. Mm -hmm. They hate me because I'm a warrior of God. Well, you can hate me all you want to, but you can't stop me because what I have comes from God. Everything I got comes from God, and you can't take it away from me. True indeed. So what would the Tunji now tell the Tunji of old? What would you what would you tell her to help her on her path and journey? Stop being afraid and use your demons to work for your advantage. I like that. I like that. Yeah, don't let nobody make you afraid. Don't let nobody take your identity. Don't let nobody tell you no, and don't let nobody tell you you're not good enough. Okay. So I was going to ask you, how did you educate yourself in your gift? But it's obviously, it's, it's God-given or whatnot. When did you really start uh, becoming aware of these talents that you had as far as your spiritual gifts? Um. Well, as far as my family tell me as a toddler, okay. I've, I've always um, exhibited specific gifts, especially speaking and seeing spirits. Mm -hmm. used to scare the shit out of my mama. Mm -hmm. um, they scared me so much to where I was afraid to use my gifts around people. Mm -hmm. I never had friends as a child. You know, My mom used to say that was... Now, me, honestly, truthfully, I thought that I was talking to real people because they showed to me in corporal form, mm -hmm. but, you know, just as, like, friends. But my mom would say that she'd be, she'd walk by the room, and I'm not talking to anybody, but she's seeing stuff moving, she's seeing me playing, and I'm happy, you know? But we also live right next to a graveyard. Mm -hmm. It was my guardians and my angels protecting me from what was trying to get at me in the graveyard. Then come to find out I met what was coming to get me. So here's the thing with... Earth angels and healers. Demons have a certain age period to either kill you or turn you evil, take all that goodness out of you, drain it, and put something evil into you. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's to the age of three, and then they become yours if they can. Mm. I wear mine on my arm. Okay. 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 Um, somebody that's just getting into entrepreneurship. Especially in the realm of what me and you deal in as far as like the spirituality, the metaphysical um, aspect on things. What would you tell somebody that's just getting into entrepreneurship to help them on their way? Don't get discouraged. It's going to be hard. Especially in this realm. You are of not going to be a millionaire overnight. People are going to hate on you. People are going to fear you. It's not you. It's the power that's within you. So don't let that stop you. Use that as your not only motivational tool, but use the power that they're giving you since they're so afraid. How many hours do you work a day managing your business? 30. <laughs> I dig that. I dig that. And that's that's real. You see what she said? It's on the 20. I know y'all were like, 30? It's only 24 hours in a day. How's she doing? Yes, 30 hours. I'm working in my sleep. Working. I was just <laughs> going to say that. That's, that's dope. I like that one. I like that one. So, um, I also want you to, you know, let the family know where can we find all of your products, your services, um, you know, for ones that don't know about Tunji's Creations, where can we get in contact with you? We oh, have a lot of places. Okay. So my brick and mortar location is 250 Sun Temple Drive, um, Suite B3 in Madison. You don't need the suite number because my name is right there on the damn door. If you miss it, then you're blind as hell. Um, I mean, no offense, but it's true. <laughs> But also, I have a Facebook page, Tunji's Creations. You can also find me on Instagram, just Tunji. TikTok, just Tunji. I have a YouTube page, just Tunji. I try to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then there, um, Tunji's Creation has its own webpage, www.tunjiscreations.com. Um, also, I have an Etsy page um, under Tunjanika Burning. And uh, you can find my products on eBay as well. Okay. Do you have any announcements uh, as far as like events that you may have coming up, like in the near future? Well, I'm always doing fun facts with Dr. Tunji where I give little snippets of um, truthful and fun information. Also, um, every Thursday at six o'clock, we have book club, which we're reading Sacred Roman. Um, 
Every full moon, every month, Mm -hmm. we have a full moon celebration where um, I teach you why the moon is so powerful and magical. Um, We make moon water and we also make full moon oil. Not only that, you get the fellowship with a whole bunch of cool people. We do releasing and manifestation techniques. So it's like, it's a release. You could call it a releasing and manifestation party if you want to. True, true, true. Oh, and September 18th, there will be a pop up shop here. Okay, okay. Most definitely. So, the final question, if you could, can you sum up your whole entrepreneurship journey in one word? Like, what would that word be? (laughs) (laughs) That is it. it. (laughs) Ric Flair, literally. Right. (laughs) Right. All the way. It's it's been a ride. It's a ride. It's still a ride. Highs and lows and yes. everything in between. But the great part is, during this whole journey, I'm finding my soul family. Like you and Ronnie. Like, I already know y'all my soulmates. I mean, you got too much of a connection. To, and of course, you know, people think that we should be married by now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? That is so hilarious. I was it's like, so well, cute. if that's the case, then it's going to be a polygamous um, uh, wedding because you're missing one person. <laughs> that's hilarious. But now... Um, that's that's true indeed. Like it, that's what I can say as far as um, on my perspective, it's it's been growing just a a spiritual family of people that you know I I never knew I'd be in contact with, and I'm grateful for everybody. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for the man behind the camera, yes. Ron, Ronnie. My whole spiritual family, everybody that's watching this YouTube channel. That's why you know I'm always saying the family because I always look at y'all like guys as family because you know you're helping you know support the movement or whatnot. So. But it's been a pleasure. I really do appreciate that. A shade to the goddess. Peace to the goddess. Please hit this sister up, man. She is awesome. I mean, as soon as you just walk into the location, if you're if you're here locally in, in the Tennessee Valley, whatnot, please come to the shop. Just feeling that energy as soon as you walk through the dress show. It's 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 a complete vibe. So. Would you like for me to give everyone a treat ending this? Yeah, we got time. So this is one of the things that I do is called sound bowl therapy now sometimes i use a uh, empty bowl today though we're using clear quartz remove negative energy give clarity remove confusion and not only that i just love clear quartz <laughs> so relax everybody and enjoy now you you may see you may see the room um change colors as my energy is coming from the bowl and going through you Peace to the family. I hope everybody enjoyed that. Thank you.